Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. Florida is Klan country, a hotbed of anti-black racism, and the enemy has been particularly active in Jacksonville lately. There was a mass murder there last month, and now this. Jacksonville police stop a black man, allegedly for a seatbelt violation, but of course, that was just a pretense to carry out one of their not-so-random acts of violence. They chased this motorist down, tased him, and then handcuffed him, and that was when they decided to start beating him, after he was handcuffed. They didn't start beating him until after they had him in cuffs, and he was beaten so badly his eyes were swollen shut, and he has a lacerated kidney. But of course, the sheriff's already saying it was justified. Far as they're concerned, good. You went ahead and brutalized some black person. That's just good police work. Now, normally the police say that they need several months to examine any act of police brutality. A thorough investigation takes months and months and months, oftentimes years. But in this case, the police in Florida, they were able to call this one justified instantaneously. No investigation required. But this is far worse than the authorities simply acting as a rubber stamp for this targeted anti-black violence. This is the state directing and encouraging it. Just like last month's mass murder in Jacksonville, Ron DeSantis also inspired this latest act of anti-black violence. He's been pushing and promoting this. When you see him going overboard to brag that there won't be any legal penalties for police brutality and misconduct, he's back in the badge. He does that specifically to send the message that he wants police to target black people to be brutalized or killed. I would love to say that he doesn't need to say it directly, but the truth of the matter is he has so many closed-door chats with the police, for all we know, he probably has told them directly to do it. The white media has learned that dirtying up the black victims isn't as effective as it used to be, but in this case, they're protecting the assailants, both their identities and the crimes they've committed in the past. There were a number of gun-toting, badge-holding thugs who attacked Lakean Woods, but four in particular deserve our special attention. Now, three of them are Hunter Sullivan, Robert Bias, and Bo Daigle. Hunter Sullivan has at least five incidents in his police file, including unnecessary force. One of those incidents involved him and his father, Dennis Sullivan, who not surprisingly is also a thug with a badge. Apple doesn't fall far from the tree. In 2019, those two were caught on video in an incident where both of them took part in beating a black woman outside of a downtown Jacksonville bar. The prosecutors, of course, refused to prosecute. Hunter Sullivan was given a mere slap on the wrist, two weeks suspension, and then back to the job as if nothing had happened, because in truth, nothing had. Robert Bias has nine incidents in his police file, with at least five of them being citizens' complaints. Two of them were found to be legitimate, even by the corrupt Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. So that meant it was pretty bad that they had no choice but to say, okay, he did it. In 2015, Bias and another officer beat a woman during a traffic stop for refusing to give them her ID. Of course, no charges were filed in that violent incident either. And that brings us to Bo B.P. Daigle. Now, the white media article that I'm quoting from, they claim that they had looked and they couldn't find any citizen complaints on him. They say he has no citizen complaints. But of course, this is the white media, and these racists are not just liars, they're incompetent. Because I did just five minutes of digging, and I very quickly found that Bo Daigle not only has a citizen complaint against him, but that he killed someone in 2017. Bicyclist is dead, and a JSO officer is off the street. This is a follow-up story to breaking news we told you about last night at 11. And police tell us it's the result of an officer-involved bicycle crash last night that happened near the intersection of Moncrief Road and Sycamore Street. Police say the officer was dispatched on a low-priority call, so he did not have his emergency lights on. Just north of the Moncrief and Sycamore intersection, the blood, police tape, and memorial My brother died in the right there. are all reminders of what happened just one day ago. I hadn't even been able to tell my mother yet because she's sick and I'm scared she may have a heart attack. Police tell us Richard's brother was heading south here on Moncrief Road. At the same time, Officer B.P. Daigle was nearby responding to a low-priority call, his emergency lights off. Police say the bicycle swerved left, then right, as the front corner of the officer's car struck and killed the bicyclist. That bicyclist had no reflective clothing or lights. Police say witnesses told them Daigle didn't appear to be speeding. I said, well, how fast do you think he was going? Richard says he heard something else. They say about 60, 65 miles an hour. Now, with the damage on the side of his car, 
at 35 miles an hour, it doesn't match up, buddy. I'm just asking for the truth to come out. That's all I'm asking for. Now, you have a case where this violent punk didn't have his police cruiser lights on or his sirens, and it was a low-priority call, and yet he was moving at such a high rate of speed that he ran over and killed a black cyclist, 57-year-old Derek Woolbright. So no, Bo B.P. Daigle does have a citizen's complaint against him after all. And he killed someone. See, if you let the white media tell it, you'll be completely in the dark about these race soldiers. You'll think, oh, well, the white media says this guy doesn't have any complaints, so that must mean he's clean. No. This is just the standard line that the white media always uses whenever there's some thug with a badge who attacks or kills a black person. The white media always starts off with the lie that, well, we looked and their service record shows that they don't have any citizen complaints. They do that every single time. And every time we find out that it's a lie. So, you have a number of assaults and at least one fatality that we know of from these violent subhumans who attacked Lakean Woods. They have numerous disciplinary complaints, but none of them is prosecuted or even fired. All of these guys, even after they kill people, oh, they're still just allowed to remain on the loose. They just keep showing up in the news and always for bad reasons, but that's never a problem. No need to prosecute. No need to fire them, no need to do anything. Just like the police refuse to terminate their employment, not because there's no evidence, but because the police are a domestic terrorist organization. They're a criminal enterprise and nothing else. And that brings us to Joe Sue Gariga. By the way, I don't care how his name is pronounced, so spare me. This guy's a real piece of work. I and Tariq and others have been posting about this guy on Twitter, letting people know what the hell is up with this guy. He's another Jacksonville cop who keeps showing up in the news for all the wrong reasons. In 2019, he made national headlines when he killed a black student who he had stopped for a seatbelt violation. The same rationale that was used when the police attacked Lakean Woods. And just to show what a reprobate this Gariga character is, there was an additional scandal when it was discovered that Gariga was part of an online chat group of crooked cops. And when someone mentioned that Gariga's victim, Jamie Johnson, was being honored during an NFL ceremony, Gariga lost his mind and showed that he's a tether through and through. He posted a message saying, why are they recognizing that clown? And then he posted a follow-up message saying, goes to show no matter how wrong they are, they still will be recognized just because they are black. Now this guy is supposed to be black himself, or at least you would think he is. He draws a distinction, though, between himself and black people. He sounds and uses words no different than any other alt-right troll on the internet. No matter how wrong they are. They will still be recognized because they are black. So he doesn't consider himself black. This is how he talks about a man who he murdered in cold blood, and he makes it good. Well, it's because they're black. They're black. Yeah, he's not. This is who murdered Jamie Johnson. I know there's a lot of immigrants who listen to me, and they probably bristle when they hear this kind of talk, but you need to understand. This is why I and others of the new voices of black media go so hard on these tethers. This is the reason why. This is why we tell the harsh realities of what immigration means for black Americans in the U.S. Instead of complaining at myself and others and saying, why do you have to say that, you divisive? No, you need to be talking to your buddy, Joe Zugariga, and tell him that the murders he commits and the assaults he takes part in, that's what's divisive. Even after this confession came to light, the authorities still didn't do anything to this creep. And to think the bastard actually had the nerve to wonder why the NFL was honoring his victim. It's because decent people recognize that Gariga is total trash, just like Sullivan, Daigle, and Bias. The public recognizes that these are the bad guys, and they won't honor evil. Of course, you won't be surprised at all to learn that this Gariga creep was also involved in another fatal police shooting in 2015. Now, if something happens once, it's a phenomenon. If it happens twice, it's a coincidence. But when it happens three times, then you got a pattern of behavior. The average police officer in the U.S. only pulls their weapon twice in their entire careers. And on average, they may only use it once in their entire career. This clown has been involved in numerous violent incidents, fatal incidents. At some point, common sense is supposed to kick in and you're supposed to say the common denominator here is him. 
But he's not alone. His pals also have incidents in their police records, too, as I've told you. Between them, there's at least three dead people and a huge number of assaults. And what do they all have in common? The people these criminals have attacked and killed have all been black. And then you have animals like racist Ron DeSantis saying that he wants to use his powers as governor to remove prosecutors for being soft on crime. All these woke prosecutors who refuse to bring charges against criminals, they gotta go, DeSantis says. Well, you have four of them here who prosecutors refuse to touch. And DeSantis isn't saying a word because it's not about crime, it's about race. These criminals are allowed to remain on the loose because this is the kind of racial violence that the white supremacists in Florida want. They can violate the law all day long just so long as they're doing it against black people. Now, what happened to Lakeian Woods is very much like what happened to Tyree Nichols and Jamie Johnson, except in this case, Woods wasn't killed. But the animals who attacked him have been killing black citizens for several years now, and even though they're guilty as hell, nothing's being done about them. You have what they call pattern and practice in law enforcement, and when it comes to the racist in Florida, they're being allowed to carry out these murders and assaults with impunity. This is state-sponsored terrorism. I will, of course, watch and see what Mr. Woods and his family have to say about this. We can call out the evil that these white supremacists and their tether lap dogs do without going too far to stick up for people who may not understand the severity of the situation that they're in. But I've long said that police are nothing more than a taxpayer-funded street gang, and they have to be regarded that way and treated that way. They understand the purpose that they serve in this society, to maintain the racial order through the use of violence. But of course, in order to make sure that these state terrorists don't hesitate to carry out their acts of murder and assault, the authorities have to make it clear they won't be punished. Black people must be proactive in protecting ourselves. And we must also support those who defend themselves from police violence, like Kenneth Walker, who protected himself from a violent home invasion carried out by police thugs who used a fraudulent warrant and then murdered Breonna Taylor. Black people are under no obligation to be targets of violence or just sit back and hope that we won't be the next victim. These are not police. These are criminals. And the politicians who encourage them are accessories to their crimes. The criminals declaring themselves innocent of wrongdoing, that's not justice, and society doesn't accept it either. Serial killers and career criminals on the loose are not law enforcement. They are a plague on society. And when a deadly pathogen is on the loose, it behooves us all to protect ourselves and one another. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Bo Eldridge McLean. Jeffrey Williams, Sean, Gordon Gates, and Radia Bay. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black Empowerment only exists because of you.